see why they call me the angel of no mercy. <laughs> ah. Dr. Jackson. Those ostics should come out of your salary. This is my salary. The two of you should be busy. This is emergency. Don't you have anything to do? Dr. Riverside, everything is under control. Ah, I understand you've been looking for me, Stanley. Ah, John, yes, I understand that you've been working on the vacation schedule. I just want you to know if I can be of any assistance. Well, thank you, but the job is almost finished. I've got the move. I don't know why you're bothered. Everybody seems to be on vacation already. Can you believe that this is emergency? What's wrong with a little peace and quiet? Oh, I'm all for it, John. We need a few moments to pause and reflect. But this makes me nervous. I mean, suppose, just suppose, nothing ever happens again. What would we... Happy now? Oh, I'll get that. Dr. Riverside, emergency. It's for you. Thank you. Hello? All right, look, he's going to need sutures. Uh, put him in room four, get Dr. Ferguson, and clean out the wound, will you? You're going to be just fine, Mr. Jones. I gave him CPR, you know. Okay, uh, what do we got here? Uh, chest pains. His vital signs were stable in the ambulance. His name is Jones. All right, let's have a look at you, Mr. Jones? John Jones. Right. Jones. Good, good traditional name. Put him in room two. I'll be right with you. Okay. You, uh, you a friend of the patient? No, not exactly. But I gave him a CPR, you know. Good. Miss? Lorna the tour. Yeah, not a good traditional name, yes. Man, when you barbecue, you don't know when to stop. We got here, Jackson. Probable second-degree burns. All right, clean. Dress the wounds. Aunt O'Malley, make sure she's had a tetanus shot. She hasn't. Get her one. Coming right up. Emergency, Dr. Riverside. How many? Oh, boy. Okay, we'll be ready for him. Ah, Dr. Gates, just the man I need. Oh, no, not me. I was invited to play pickup sticks. Bus accident. Victims are coming in. Don't come, don't, then die. Ma'am, what's the D, D, don't you sure. He doesn't know any English. Come on, then die. You sure? Um, I've been trying to talk to her ever since we picked her up. Oh, then die. So die. She's burning up. We better do a fever workup. D, yeah. D. She sounds Vietnamese. How do you know? I was there. Well, then why didn't you speak to her? I can't. Don't die. What happened? Don't she passed scared. out in the street. As soon as we got there, she went crazy. Oh, Mally, you're Oriental. Can you make contact with this woman? Oh, I'm sorry. My only foreign language is Spanish. I think she's Vietnamese. Can't you talk to her at all? Huh. I even have trouble so with die. fortune cookies. No, stay. So all right, die. let's get her to a room. Panic's contagious. So die. With that fever, she'll be ashes in a few hours. Tron. Pardon? Miss Trung, lab technician. She's Vietnamese. How do you know? How do I know? I recommended her for that job. I feel much better. Get her to take me back to my hotel. Relax, Riker. I am not going to blow your cover. Uh, Miss Latour, um... Mr. Riker, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, is in very good hands now. I don't think there's any need for you to hang around anymore. Oh, I don't mind. This is all so exciting. At the moment, what the patient needs is rest and uh, no distractions. You understand. Well, okay. But, oh, that CPR I gave him, that really helped, didn't it? Probably saved his life. Oh. Listen, um... Could you do me a little favor? Sure. In the future, could you take it a little bit easy on your gentlemen friends? I don't want any more heart patients. Oh, doctor. Pharmacist on call. Please go to CCU staff. Oh, Pharmacist on call to CCU staff. Don't shove out the city! Don't shove out the no one is going to... Oh, Miss Tron, I'm so glad you're here. Please. This woman is scared silly of us. Could you talk to her and tell her what nice guys we are? I will try. Binti, binti, badingi. Tindoy ladun. Her name is Tuan. 
Could you get an address so we could contact your family? Takungala, dear. She has no family. She wants to go home. Well, she has to live somewhere. Isn't there anyone that we can contact? Oh, the boat people have developed a fear of authority and foreigners. But we're doctors. <laughs> she calls you white savages. Well, really? Would you please tell her that all these white savages want to do is examine her so that we can make her well again? She's village people, too, and they do not show their bodies to men. Ow. Maybe if I could help. Mm, great. Okay. Would you ask her? But one. Ask a chum less to examine it, huh? Fang. Yeah. She says yes. See, Miss Trong is extremely capable. I knew that when I interviewed her for her lab job. And here I thought you just wanted my body. Oh, Miss Trong. <clears throat> Dr. Riverside, the bus accidents are coming in. We can use a few more hands. I'll be right there. Uh, you'll do very well. I'm sure you will. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to examine her by remote control. All right? Can you palpate her abdomen? Yes. All right, start in the right lower quadrant. Now the left. You feel any rigidity? Yes, quite a bit. Oh, I was afraid of that. Don't have to out. Do you know bowel sounds with a stethoscope? Mm -hmm. All right. Don't have to it out. Anything? Are you sure? Don't have to it. With an acute abdomen in her age group. We could be dealing with a perforated diverticulum or an obstructed bowel. Ask her if she'll give us permission to perform some exploratory surgery. But est-ce que tu donnes l'autorisation au docteur de t'opérer? Come, come! Josie, Couton! Tell her her life is at stake. No, it's very, very important. Josie, Couton! Josie, Couton! She said her God will take care of her. Only if he knows how to do exploratory surgery. Take it to room six, please. Okay, room four. Trapper? How did Trang do? Not well enough, I'm Oh, I don't believe that. Trapper, we've got a rough one. Acute abdomen with peritoneal signs and the patient won't consent to surgery. And I did my best to convince him. I'm certain of it. Well, you can't operate without her permission. Uh, put her in a room, we'll do something. Huh? Go to court if necessary. Oh, it's not that simple, doctor. A court order will help you, but it won't help her. She'll die of fright before she even get to surgery. Without surgery, she'll die anyway. I am sorry. Please call me if there's anything I can do. Kim Day, Kim Day. Is there anyone in there? Anybody in this room?
Vietnamese patient? Uh, room 503. No, she's not there. Well, of course she's there. That's her room. Her room is there. Her clothes are there. She's not there. Well, that's impossible. I just looked in on her a while ago. Maybe she's been taken to x-ray. No, she's not in x-ray. I think she's gone. <sighs> Doctor, she is much too weak to leave here under her own power. She's... Oh, I can't believe this. All right, well, make sure you search the grounds, because if we don't find her, she may die. She can't be too far away, Trevor. She was so weak, she could hardly stand up. Does she have any visitors? No, none. All right, we've notified security and the police. If she's anywhere in this vicinity, they'll find her. There's nothing more we can do. Oh, great. What, do we just stand around here while she could be dying out there? Well, we got six more repair jobs from the bus accident. You gonna stand around and complain or give me a hand, huh? Okay, I'll take some, you take some. But it doesn't make any sense. Patients do not disappear like that. Jobs, one appendectomy, but I'm still on time for breakfast. Hey, should I try good morning? Well, I guess I won't. <laughs> Any word about that Vietnamese woman? Oh, she's doing fine. What? You mean she's back? Back from where? Where is she? In recovery. Recovery? Recovering from what? From surgery. Surgery? What the hell are you talking about? The lady had a laparotomy last night. Oh, are we talking about the same woman? Botswan, the Vietnamese woman. Where are you guys going? Did you schedule her for surgery? Come on, she's your patient. I didn't schedule her. Looks like a nice, tidy job. Well, of course it does. But uh, when do you have time to do it? Do what? This. Are you kidding? While you were in room A, I was in room B working on accident victims all night. <laughs> Why do you insist on playing these stupid little games? What games? Look, it is obvious that you have performed a beautiful laparotomy on this woman, so why don't you just admit it? Trapper, I did not perform any surgery on this woman. Well, your name's right here on the surgical report. Look at that. I mean, is that your signature? Hmm? Well, yeah, it, it sure as hell looks like it, but I'm telling you, Trapper, I did not perform this operation. Well, somebody did. Now, if it wasn't you, who was it? Don't tell me you haven't heard them. Oh, of course I have. But I hear so much, Arnold, so many rumors. That... Tell me, Arnold, what, what? Well, I've been hearing things about... Emergency. Ghosts. Phantoms. No, just perverts. No, I'm talking about ghost surgeries, phantom operations. Things are happening that shouldn't happen. Ghost surgery? Come on, Stanley, what's it all about? I really don't know. I'm, I, I get the feeling I'm losing control of this place. I can't allow that to happen. This is my hospital. Your hospital? I'm counting on you, Stanley. I thought it was my hospital. My hospital, my staff. I have talked to every surgeon we've got here, and nobody knows a thing. Well, we do know that Donzo didn't do the operation. Yeah, well, then somebody is playing musical autographs. I mean, how did his signature get on that report, huh? Well, you know what surgery was like last night. Every room was working. In that madhouse, it would have been very easy for somebody to sign the wrong piece of paper. Want some carrot juice? No. I mean, if he didn't do that surgery, then who did, huh? Well, whoever did, did a very good job. The Vietnamese woman seems to be doing very well. Turn that thing off, will you? Do you realize, Ernie, that we have no consent form in the files? That entire operation was done without legal permission or medical approval under God knows what kind of circumstances. So if anything goes wrong, we are all in a lot of trouble, especially Gonzo. Drink that. I'm Ernie. drinking. Yeah. Hi, John. Ernie. Hi. Well, what do you want, Stanley? The vacation schedules are already finished. Things are going on, John. I keep hearing stories. I'd like to know which are true and which are not. John, don't I always share everything with you? I tell you everything Dad says. Your dad would be thrilled with this hospital today. Thrilled with what, mm, John? Yeah. Okay, I'll be right there. Well, sorry, Stanley, I have to go now. Ellie Riker's here. Who? Oh. Mr. Jones' wife. 
Inhalation therapist, do I see you? Inhalation therapist, do I see you? Good to see you again, Ellie. <laughs> Thanks, Trap. Ah. How is he? Come on, Al Riker's an ox. The old angina ain't gonna keep him down. Now, tell me the truth. Is he really all right? I do so swear. <laughs> That's good to hear. Why is he here under a phony name? Look, Ellie, your husband is a very big man in the state. I mean, there are a lot of people who believe that he runs it from behind the scenes. So there could be a hundred reasons why he'd like to keep his illness quiet. Yeah, I suppose so. How'd it happen, you know? I mean, somebody told me he was in a hotel room and he just keeled over. You know, something like that. Uh, who found him? I, I guess I should offer my gratitude. Ah, oh, come on, don't worry about him. I'm sure you want to see him. You know, Trapper, I feel like this whole thing is my fault. I should have been with him. I should have stopped this merry-go-round we've been on. Hey, come on. Fix your face. You got a date with your husband? Hi, Doctor. Uh, hi, Miss Latour. Uh, listen, go right on in. The uh, nurse will take you right to him. Thanks, Trapper. Can I see Mr. Jones? Uh, I'm sorry. As long as he's in CCU, only the immediate family can see him. Oh. Well, how's he doing? Pretty good. I'll tell him you were here. I'm sure glad he's doing okay. Tell him I'll stop by to see him real soon. I will. And, uh, just to be sure, um, of your own convenience, why don't you call first, okay? Oh, I don't mind. I like hospitals. Sometimes I think I like to be a nurse. I gave him CPR, you know. I know, you told me. I look good in white, too. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> Bye. wanted to be Mrs. Big. Mm. You didn't have to push me. <laughs> I wanted power long before I met you. You're not enough to get yourself in a situation like this. It's our separate lives that did this. We haven't lived separate lives. I saw you four times last month. I wasn't here when you became ill. Mm. That's all over now. We're going to be together from now on. And it's not going to be any more of this nonsense. Did you see Trapper? You told me you had an angina attack, but you were too strong to let it throw mm -hmm. you. What else did you say? Nothing. Is there something else I ought to know? No, no, no. I wondered if there was something else I should know. So. Well, we both know what's wrong with our marriage. But that's over now. It's going to be different from now on. I promise you. A devidor bakshi. A devidor bakshi. Baten, je te promets, tout va aller bien. She says she remembers nothing about the surgery. That's not possible. Somebody medicated her, somebody prepared her. She says she recalls nothing. She uses a lot of words to say nothing. She keeps saying bakshi. That rings a bell somewhere. What does it mean? Mm, just a term of endearment. Baxi. Baxi. Damn, that sounds familiar. Why are you taking her pressure? Just checking it. You handle that unit like Schweitzer. 
82 over 50. That's very bad. She could be bleeding internally. Cold. No, don't. You'll upset her. Let me do it. Distended and very rigid. All right, let's get some blood and to stabilize her blood pressure. Dr. Gates, what about if the bleeding doesn't stop? You better notify the staff, Phantom. She might need more surgery. Yeah, hello, this is Dr. Gates. I'm going to need at least two units of blood for Batuan in room 503, stat. AB positive. AB positive. Yeah, you should have a clot down there on her. Right, make it quick. Trapper, we'd better get that old lady into surgery. Has she signed a consent form yet? No, we're gonna have to get a court order. All right. Wait a minute. She is an adult. We cannot force her to have an operation she does not want to have. And it would definitely not be a good idea to operate on a patient in her state of mind. So what are we gonna do? Just keep pouring blood into her? Well, I don't know. Maybe the other surgeon will show up or some relatives. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Ciao, Buxton. Yeah, hi. Let's you and I talk. What is it? Out What's here. wrong? Out here. Dr. Gates, what's going on? The word box C, it means doctor, doesn't it? Yes. And she called you doctor, box C. She's frightened and confused. She would call anyone in a white coat doctor. But you work like one, the way you examined or palpated her abdomen. I am a lab technician. I've observed many physicians. Why do I keep feeling that you're holding something back? Why should I do that? I don't know. But damn it, she had to know her surgeon. Otherwise, we would have heard her all over the hospital. There had to be a friendly face involved in that operation. And? You think that I... I think you know more than you're saying. Please, I have to go back to my lab. Wait. Why won't you help? I can't. No matter how much I want to, I just can't. Well? Impossible. Not now. Choco. Choco. Hi. Oh, hi. They transferred Mr. Jones out of the CCU. Uh, he's still quite ill. Oh. Well, I made some brownies for him. Why don't you leave them here and I'll see that he gets them. He's kind of out of it. Oh, of course. You know what? When I left here, after trying to see him, I went out the wrong way. And it was emergency. And I sat there and watched. It was so exciting. I bet you just love your work. Oh, I do, I do. Uh, look, would you excuse me right now? The patient in 510 just threw up. Well, she's stable for now, but it's taken a lot of blood to get her there. Oh, yeah. And the power of prayer and the helplessness of Western medicine. <laughs> now, you know, maybe we could offer a, a reward uh, for information leading to the uh, unknown surgeon. Well, you've got to do something. Mr. Slocum is closing in fast. He's even making noises about a board of inquiry. Oh. Come on in and bring good news. <clears throat> Dr. McIntyre, I would like to speak to you. Sure. Do you want us to leave? No, you will hear about this soon enough. I performed the laboratory on the old woman. Not you? I am a physician. I studied in Paris and interned here in your country. And I was for six years the chief in surgery in the biggest hospital in Hue, Vietnam. And you're working as a lab technician now? Why? I never got my license here. This is the only job I could get. But you're a surgeon. I was a surgeon. Until my plane landed in the United States. And then all of a sudden I was nothing. 
You could probably walk through our flex exam. I did. Seven years ago. But I stayed away too long. Now the only way for me to get my license is to pass the oral exams. So uh, why haven't you taken them? Next month will be my first opportunity. And then, perhaps, if I pass, I will be a surgeon again. But not before. Now, wait a minute. You... You performed a very critical surgical procedure on that woman. Now, you couldn't have done it alone. You needed an assistant, someone to handle the anesthetic. I'm confessing for myself. I was the primary surgeon. There was enough confusion last night to cover for my activities. And I arranged for the conference room to be used. Conference room? Well, that's a great place for a laparotomy. Our procedure may have been crude, but I can assure you they were sterile. I took every precautions. Why did you use Dr. Gates's name? I needed a name, any name. Then I heard that Dr. Gates had the reputation of being unconventional. I am sorry. I intend to confess all this to Mr. Slocum. You will be cleared. And what happens to you? I have no idea. Look, why didn't you come to us? We could have helped you. How? Could you have pulled the certification right out of the air? Well, I don't know, but I'm sure it would have been better than this. I mean, don't you realize you've broken the law? I mean, you have committed a felonious act. That's right. I realize an old woman would not let anybody else help her. She was dying, and I committed the crime of saving her life. Now tell me, doctors, what would you have done in my place? She's one hell of a lady. It's gonna go down on her record. She'll never get certified. Doesn't she understand that? Does anybody want my opinion? Do I have a choice? Felonious act my foot. If that woman is a felon, then I am Idi Amin. What are we talking about here? She's a doctor, for God's sake. She treats sick people. She saves lives. What difference does it make whether the lives are in Vietnam or in San Francisco? Why should we be denied her services because she was born somewhere else? Because of a stupid rule, one lousy regulation, we're turning away a competent surgeon, a worthwhile human being, and we have the nerve to call her a criminal. I think we are the criminals in this case. A simple go to hell, Dr. McIntyre, would have been enough. I almost brought you the clown with the balloons and lollipops. The flowers are enough. <laughs> Do you know how many flowers you'd have if the public knew you were in the hospital? Probably enough to keep you busy for a week, huh? You realize I've been looking at your back now for an hour. Come on over here. Come on, the crisis is over. Is it? Well, sure. It wasn't much of a crisis anyway. It's more like indigestions with delusions of grandeur. Huh? Al, we have to talk. What have we been doing? We've been banging words together. We haven't been talking. What do you want to talk about? Our favorite non-subject. The Riker marriage. And maybe a mistake or two. What, what kind of a mistake? Oh, the kind that started at 6 o'clock and somebody's late for dinner and... Out-of-town trips piled sky-high and cocktails for one. No other cocktail to tinkle cheers to. The emptiness can make you, uh, do terrible things. People in love can forgive terrible things. Is it that easy? No, it's not easy. If it's worth working for, and if we care enough, we can overcome, surmount any obstacle. Even guilt? Am I that guilty? No, but I am. Oh, Ellie, come on. Don't blame yourself for this. Don't. Huh? It was a casual affair. It was just one terrible moment of weakness. <laughs> yes, I, I suppose it was. I... I What are you saying? Don't ask me for details. I'm so ashamed. But it just happened once. It was only once out. I was so lonely and I was so empty. Honey. He was there. Oh, don't, 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 don't. 
No, I, I, I don't expect you to forgive me. I just hope and pray that... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so no, sorry. No. Please, it's over. It's over. We'll never talk about it again. No, please. It was once. It was only once. <laughs> Hey, hey, listen, I've been, I've been looking for a dinner date. Now, look, this, this isn't, this isn't the greatest sweet in the world, but I'm a big man here, you know, and I bet if I try, I can sneak in a really decent bottle of wine. Hmm? No. Honey, no, no, no. So from now on, when they take out a piece of equipment, they'll sign for it. It'll be punched into the computer and we'll have a running inventory. Fantastic. That way you'll have a control of every piece of equipment. Well, a good hospital is a matter of good control. Arnold, I want to talk about something else. What? Miss Tron. Oh, yes, that. It was amazing, wasn't it? Oh. I still can't believe she did what she did. Oh, it was incredible to me, too. So wonderful with difficult patients. And you know, it isn't easy to act as a good translator. What are you talking about? A token of our esteem, Arnold. Ah, a little raise, a title of some sort. I don't believe I'm hearing what I'm hearing. A small parking space. She has a foreign car. That's it? You talked us into hiring her, didn't you? Well, I always have had a certain touch for personnel. Well, you can forget the touch. I've just fired you, Miss Trang. Fired her? She's out. O-U-T, out. All well, because I tried to get her a little raise in a parking space? Arnold, that's unjust. Stanley. Perhaps I could explain the facts of life to you. You'll take good care of them, please, Miss Brancusi. Philip here likes chocolate. <laughs> They'll be well taken care of. It's you I'm worried about. I'll be all right. All of us feel just awful about the whole situation. After all, you didn't do anything terrible. Rules exist for a reason. Oh, you got a bum rap. You know what we ought to do is organize a sympathy strike. That way, if we all walked out, the hospital would close and they'd be forced to reconsider. No need for that. Oh, hospital's pen and pencil. I don't want to be accused of stealing. Excuse me. Maybe even Dr. Riverside would walk out with us. Pardon? No, probably not. Obviously, you've heard the news. I am shocked. I, I am shocked. Interesting. A whole career at San Francisco Memorial in an airline bag. You helped make those months very enjoyable. Why didn't you tell me? I couldn't. If I had known you were a physician, I could have talked to Dad. We could have helped. We could have pulled strings, something. Slocum had the gall to use the word criminal. How would you like to walk a vicious criminal to her call? Great, she's still here. She's just leaving. You can't, not now. The old woman's getting worse. We need your help. She needs further surgery. I am not qualified. Or well, you can talk to her again. Tell her to consent to the operation. She'll listen to you, Trang. We're running out of time. I am sorry. That's a hell of a thing for a doctor to say. My credentials as a doctor no longer exist. What about all your years of training? Your instincts, your medical conscience, do they exist? Trang, your patient is dying. The way I see it, she has about 12 hours to live. That gives you 11 hours to feel sorry for yourself and one hour to save her life. What'd she say? She says she won't let those hairy, round eyes butcher her. You asked. <laughs> Tell her you'll operate. I won't lie to her. When she's under, she won't know who's operating. A lie would be unforgivable. Her death would be better? Just a minute. Uh, would she let you operate? Yes, but don't ask me to deceive her. Right, now you said your oral exams are about a month away, right? Yes, but... Could you pass them now? Today? Now? Uh, I guess with some studying. Start cramming. You're going to do the surgery. But how? I don't understand. Trapper, your head is going to join mine on a pike. Let me worry about that. Schedule the operation and stand by. I'll be right back. Look, Trapper, come on. Just the man I want to see. Yeah, I'll get back to you. I want to register a complaint. Well, if it's about the food, get in line. Oh, not the food. Somebody took away my pretty night nurse. 
Look, pal, you keep that up. You're going to get yourself shot by a jealous mate. Your own. Yeah, Ellie. Poor Ellie. She knew the truth about me. She'd tear me apart, and I deserve it. Oh, feeling a little guilty, are we? Mm, a lot of character, isn't it? Well, I'm not a very nice person. I'm a selfish hedonist. I exploit nice people. And even my wife. If she knew about me what I know about me, she wouldn't like me at all. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I don't want you telling her about that hooker either. Oh, would I do a thing like that? I don't know. You got a kind of a scheming look in your eye there. Not at all. I uh, just came by and asked a favor. Oh, no. <laughs> Blackmail from you, Trap. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You've got due bills with just about everybody in this state. I mean, with your clout, you can get anything you need. Well, I need... Three medical examiners. Wait a minute. You don't fool around with state medical. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Nothing dishonest. Maybe a little unconventional. <laughs> Please say yes. My, uh, my palms are sweating. Diphtheria, gram-positive rods with club ends. Good. Uh, what are the most common organisms in external otitis? Pseudomonas and proteus. An old Greek vaudeville act. Now, what about tonsillitis? Strep and staph. All right. Let's go on to the antibiotics. Oh, yes, they are antibiotics. Hooray for antibiotics. Start with the aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides, streptomycin, gentamicin. Why do conference room doors have to be so thick? To drive us crazy. If only we had a hint of how she's doing. She's doing well. I know it. How can you be so sure? She might be failing miserably. She won't fail. She can't. But she might. And if she does, that poor old woman could die. Stanley, hmm. why don't you have a little faith? I think it's easy passing those oral shoop. It isn't easy passing those oral shoop. Even I had a rough time doing it. Any better? Worse. Pressure 74 over 48, and she's on a six unit of blood. Maybe we'd better prep her for surgery just to be ready. Well, as weak as she is, she won't let anyone touch her. Okay, stay with her. Nothing yet? So far, twins. She thinks it's funny. Trent could be in there failing, and she thinks it's funny. What is this, the maternity ward? We did that one. Well, what's going on? The cardinals are in there picking a new hospital administrator. They should. The present one allows too much impertinence from the staff. What time do you have? 9.17. She passed. <laughs> Come on, Ernie, let's get scrubbed. I'll get the patient. <laughs> Congratulations! Oh, thank you, Stanley. I'm so grateful to you, to everyone. I better get the surgery. Yes, I bet you breathed right through it. Let me tell you, it was rather difficult. Never doubt you for a minute. Now, don't forget, the world is not the hero of this. Section. Okay, there's the bleeder. Can you get it? Kelly. More retraction, please. Got it. Nice work. Okay, let's tie it up. You want us to close for you? Thank you. I need all the practice I can get. Oh, yes, that reminds me. You, uh, you never did tell us who assisted you with your phantom surgery. What's the matter, Trapper? Don't you believe in ghosts? Yeah, I guess I do now. <clears throat> Suit you, please. is recuperating nicely and I've received a very attractive offer from a large hospital in San Diego. Oh, nonsense. I'll talk to Dad. I'm sure he'll match their offer. Thank you, Stanley. 
But I really must go to San Diego. Why? A lot of my people are settling there, and I would like to be at hand to help them. It's not so far, you know. You could visit me. You really wouldn't mind? I would love it. Well, you know, it won't be easy. Uh, with all the work I have to do here, it's, it's difficult to get away. Try. for Mr. Jones? Of course. Just tell him that I won't be seeing him in the future. Oh? I've signed up for nursing school. Nursing school? Isn't that neat? The way I see it, I've got a good start. I've done CPR, you know. Uh, yes, I know. Um, that's terrific. Good luck. Thanks. Bye now. Bye. Well, I've written to Sacramento about the foreign doctor situation. I mean, there's got to be an easier way to get them certified. Yeah, well, fortunately, there aren't too many of them around. Oh, one moment. Doctor! Doctor! <laughs> 